Hey YouTube, I know so many owners, and I'm sure you do too, yep. Tom, whose dogs just don't play, and they start to get a little bit disappointed. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I, one, one of my dogs in particular taught me this lesson. I used to find it so frustrating. Illy, she would not play with me, and yet I'd take her to the park. She'd play with every dog, every squirrel, every leaf, every blade of grass, and it's like, what is wrong with me? Oh, <laughs> and yet you start to feel a little despondent, a little maybe disappointed, and you also know that you're not unlocked the real results that you could be when you're playing things like recall games or maybe calling off something difficult, a yeah. deer, a squirrel, a dog in the environment, a person that you don't want your dog to run up to. You've got the power of play. Now, the power of play really does take it up a gear when actually things can be a little bit maybe uninspiring when it comes to food. So play really can inspire dogs yeah. at the next level. Play really, I see it as a positive benefit in relationship. It's interacting with you. I also see when I'm playing with my dog, just a level that you don't necessarily get on food, like yeah. a, an, another level, a raised yeah. level, a, a whole new energy space to work with a dog, right? And what it allows you to do as well is almost step beyond food in the sense of actually, I might not even have a toy on me, but because I've grown these, these play skills, anything becomes an opportunity for play. And so those of you who are like, oh, I really want to get away from, you know, constantly having food in my hands. First bit of advice, don't have food in your hands then. Um, and then the second thing is actually let's grow this and let's build it and let's make it a focus because you don't happen upon it right you don't all of a sudden you're not all of a sudden there one day actually got to be proactive and build it the other thing i should say is we've got a whole episode on that so there's a whole episode on how you can actually yeah. work with your dog without having food in your presence so make sure you check that one out right yeah, abso absolutely absolutely Empty hands. <laughs> absolutely okay so a couple of things to think about i'm going to give you a few top tips as is tom uh, as to how i would play with a dog yeah. who can be a little bit foody or just disinterested interested in toys. So first tip, I'm not going to have food on my presence or it's not in my pocket. I literally, there's nothing there. I haven't got food on the cupboards here. I haven't got food oh. anywhere. There are no cupboards. But anyway, there, there isn't any food is what I'm trying to tell you. There's no food in the bucket. I wouldn't have food on me when I'm starting out working with play. So that's my mm. first top tip. Yep. My second tip, uh, before I let Tom go for a tip as well, would be I'd, I'd, I'd have a selection of different toys. So I wouldn't necessarily, like I know, Ooh. sorry if this excites your dog, I know that- There's a dog's barking everywhere. Squeaks, <laughs> hello. Squeaks can be super cool for her, as can ballies. She likes ballies. So they're a bit more exciting. Uh, maybe a tennis ball with some fluff on it. Well, that might be dust. And um, it could be like a smaller, holy ball or a different type of squeaky ball like for her these are just some of the things that I might play with uh, and I'll talk about this one later this one relates to food mm. I'll talk about this one later but it wouldn't be my first go-to with a dog like her if I could help it but I do really like them when I haven't got a different option mm. but they wouldn't be my first go-to so that would be um, some of my consideration I forgot to show you I've got like a fluffy rabbit skin toy if you're a vegetarian mm. or you really don't like animal fur then just use a fake fur one I've just given her the real deal knowing that she is uh, quite excited by things like bunnies oh he's, he's missing no an eye, eye. <laughs> That concerned me. He is a squirrel. Uh, this, is, this is a toy squirrel from our from our super cool podcast, if you haven't checked that one out. <laughs> he's missing an uh, eye. He's missing an eye because Blink did take him to her bed yes. and uh, remove an eye one day. Uh, but basically fluffy toys, like dogs like her love yeah. things like that. So, so think about a selection and don't have food on your presence. Those would be my first two tips. You, Tom? Next tip would be when uh, thinking about the space that you are growing play with your dog. So if you, if you want to make this a focus, the space that you look to inspire play, get them excited about a toy, get them animated, you need to make sure that you're not using food in that space. And that's not just in the moment, but actually for some dogs, it's really important we're really clear. This is a play space. Over there is a food space. I never deliver food here. Over there I do. And that allows them to stop thinking about food and start thinking about what's happening in front of them. I had the funniest moment this morning when I was training one of my dogs, and, and you'll giggle at this. So I was training with um, a dog who's really, really, really foodie and has always been quite foodie in the past. And I've been working on toys, but very separately. So just like we've mm -hmm. been talking about, very separately. I've been working on toys and trying to keep them sort of built up. Anyway, Classic had taken a tennis ball, one of these types of tennis balls. And uh, Classic's my little, um, there she is, that's her, um, my little mini. The um, and um, That is not Classic. <laughs> um, and she pulled off some of the sort of... Uh, fur off, off one of these or the, the skin off one of these and she was playing around with it and I'd popped it up on the wall and I popped it on the side. Mm. Anyway, my little spaniel, she was running around, she was doing her game, she was working for the food and then suddenly she went and you could see she'd scented something. Now, 
I'm quite an experienced trainer and I spotted straight away that she had scented where I'd popped that ball. Like I knew that that was what she was scenting. And so I grabbed the ball, I threw it across the ground. My next tip would be take opportunities. Mm. There will be opportunities where your dog says, play! And for whatever reason, she'd had enough food or the game wasn't where she wanted it to be. Read that moment with your dog yeah. and say, let's play. So if they look like, let's play, ready? Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, super girl. Very nice, they'll take it to that bed and that bed. <laughs> and don't make it your game, make it yeah. their game. And so that... for her, I think she wants to just wiggle with it yeah. and hold it. She doesn't want me to tug it and try and rag it with her. She actually wants to keep it. And she wants to have a bit of that game first. So look at what the dog wants and, and take and the opportunity. I think that's so important to almost Kick. have it yeah. as a tip in itself yeah. that play can look like mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. It's just an, a, a fun, joyful, rewarding interaction with you or with a toy or with an object, right? So being aware of how your dog likes to interact with things. So for example, it wouldn't take long after meeting Blink to realize that she really likes carrying things, yeah? And so actually, even though that doesn't look like play for some, for, for other dogs, it definitely is play for her and she finds that really rewarding. I think sometimes we get a little bit stuck in this is what play should look like. And then we try and impose that on our dogs and our dogs go, well, that's not play to me. And then it degrades. Now, another top tip on play, when I'm trying to build play and I'm trying to sort of grow play, I personally, I know you think it's wonderful, I personally wouldn't leave her with toys for a long time. So when she's got them, I tell her how brilliant she was, I carefully take it away again and I'd be like, oh, it's so precious. Like, this is a really precious, you ready? Ah. This is a really precious <laughs> thing. She's like, it's a really precious <laughs> thing. <laughs> get it. Um, and I would let her get those. Good girl, Blinky. Good girl. And Blink was definitely the dog that kind of taught me that, um, that play was was definitely different to how I expected it. I'd had uh, border collies before Blink. She's like, I'm keeping this, thank you. Um, thank you, nice, that's very nice. And I expected, get it, I expected when she was playing that she would play this sort of strong tug game. And you can see for her that she's a bit like, I will play it, but I don't really know what you're yeah. trying to do with me. And you can see that it can become very quickly quite punishing for her. So she's tolerant of me, uh, but really, and forgiving of mm. me, but really I don't think that's what she enjoys. I think what she enjoys, and I'm sure you'll see it too, is grabbing this and then running it onto a bed. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Yes, good girl. That was really super. And, I and think that's that, what she's really enjoying. That's really important to note, is when you're playing with your dog and you're seeing play with your dog, are they truly finding that fun, joyful and rewarding, or are they obliging, yeah? Are they kind of being like, oh yes, human, yes, we'll play this game, oh, I love it. And, and there's a real difference in the picture, and we've got to remember that the reason why we play is because we want to create these real life results, we want to have um, lots of opportunity for reward and joy and fun and energy and desire, and if we're not seeing that, then we need to change the picture and we need to build it. So guys, that was just a few tips on how we might build play. And what we want, I guess, you to realize is that sometimes it's all in the preparation, the variety of toys, the observing how your dog interacts with the world, Vigilance. the spaces that you might grow this in versus spaces and where you're not gonna grow it in because they're foodie spaces. It's vigilance on your part because the, most dogs, all dogs have some level of yeah. interactive play in them. What you need to do is be vigilant. Now I did say I just quickly cover this one. I yes. do really like these when I've tried and exhausted all other options. I'd say the most people that Tom and I get to work with when we're training people day by day, I would say that they've accidentally poisoned play and they probably could get it without using one of these. But mm -hmm. if I need to go to this at the end, yeah. I will go to this. These ones, food inside them, close it up and let them go and find that with food inside it. You start it by building just the food inside, telling them how brilliant it is, gradually get it to the point where they'll nuzzle it and open it up with their nose and get quite exciting with it. Um, but ultimately, whilst Blink might be a dog that could need this because she's that type uh, that doesn't necessarily want to tug or grab things, get it? I've never had any struggle, good girl, getting her to use uh, a ball or um, d different things like the rabbit sort yeah. of um, fur and, and and the chaser tugs and the uh, fake fur, those sorts of things. I've never had any issue using them because of how we've set up. And I think that's really, really important, right, Tom? Yeah. So with that, guys, go forth, start afresh, pretend that actually your dog has never said no to playing with you, be proactive and have some fun. Make sure you share this video if you haven't already, share it worldwide, share it to someone else with a dog who isn't maybe quite as playful as they need. Go forth, share, have fun playing with your dog. <laughs>